What's up guys, Austin here, and today I have my review of the Nexus 9. Now, this of course is the latest 9-inch tablet from Google and HTC, and it is running the latest and greatest version of Android 5.0 or Lollipop. Now that is the single best part about this tablet. Now it's not a terrible tablet, but I'd be lying if I didn't say that I was expecting a lot more from HTC. From a hardware perspective, they didn't really do much to convince me that this was really worth $400. From a minimal approach, it's a decent design. It's a big black slab with a soft touch back, the same material we saw on the Nexus 5. And again, it's okay, but it's nothing special. It does grab onto a lot of fingerprints though. A lot of people like the simple look, but I personally would have preferred something that felt a little more premium, especially coming from HTC. Still, it has a metal trim around the edges, which is a nice touch, and also around the camera on the back. Now, overall, while the design of the Nexus 9 isn't revolutionary by any means, it's still pretty comfortable to hold. It feels substantial enough, maybe because of the thickness, that I feel comfortable enough just tossing it in a bag and not having to worry too much about it. Keeping on the topic of design, on the right side, there is a power button and a volume rocker. They're both terrible. There isn't enough of a tactile click from the power button and the volume rocker is really mushy and it isn't really raised from the rest of the frame so it's hard to tell whether or not you actually pressed it. It's just bad. Luckily there's an easier alternative to turn on the display. You can just double tap the screen which is a really nice feature but I can't say the same about the volume. On the front of the device, there are two stereo front-facing speakers, which is a much welcome addition, a 1.6 megapixel front-facing camera, and then of course the 8.9 inch screen. The top and bottom bezels are kind of on the thicker side, but the side bezels are pretty thin, thin enough that you can actually hold the tablet in one hand if you really wanted to. So the screen, it's 2048 by 1536, and it looks pretty good. At first, I wanted to say that it had a dull look, but that's probably just because I'm used to looking at an AMOLED screen all the time. It's not as color accurate as some other tablets. It's a little on the cooler side, but it still looks pretty good. It gets really bright so it can be used more easily outdoors, but you will notice a considerable amount of backlight bleed, which again doesn't make a good case for a pricey tablet. Another area of the tablet that wasn't quite as good as they should have been are the speakers. These are HTC's boom sound speakers, and I love the fact that they were included. They make media consumption so much better with the sound coming directly at you when watching videos and playing games, right? Well, yes and no. The speakers are a really nice addition, and they can get fairly loud, but the sound quality actually isn't that great. Whenever I play music from the Nexus 9, it sounds closed off and a bit muddled. Now, while it's not that big of a deal while watching basic YouTube videos or anything, it's pretty noticeable everywhere else. As much as I was looking forward to the speakers, they just didn't hold up that well. Now, I know I've talked about a lot of things that I don't like about the tablet, but as I said in the beginning, the saving grace of the Nexus 9 is the fact that it comes installed with Android 5.0 Lollipop. This is the best version of Android so far. It's the first major update we've seen in a while, and it brings on some pretty great features, most noticeably material design. Everything about the new Android is lighter, bouncier, and more colorful, but somehow in a very mature way. There are new transitions for just about every task, for example, bringing up the app drawer. Instead of just appearing out of thin air, your apps appear on cards that spring up from the icon on the home screen. And when you close it, it shrinks back down to that button on the home screen. It's the same with apps. Rather than just appearing, apps slide up from the bottom of the screen and slide back down when you close them. It's a really small visual tweak, but it gives this version of Android a sense of direction that brings a lot of cohesion to the platform. Another thing that I really love is the new multitasking menu. When you want to switch apps, you can select from a bunch of different cards that you can scroll through. And apps can even have multiple cards. For example, if you're sending an email, you'll have a card that shows the message that you're composing and another one that shows you your inbox. It makes it really easy to switch between tasks within apps. The menu looks really good too. It's nice and fluid and the cards are really simple. My only complaint is that since apps can have multiple cards, you can sometimes have an overwhelming amount of cards and there's still no way to quickly close all of them. Now notifications are greatly improved here too. They appear on the lock screen and they're easier to interact with and overall just look a whole lot better. There's a priority mode that you can set so that you only receive important updates or no notifications at all. And you can even change the notification settings for certain apps right from the lock screen. If you pull down, you get access to quick access toggles. And here you can adjust brightness and Wi-Fi and other settings. But there's a new setting here that allows you to access user profiles. So you can set up multiple profiles just in case multiple people in your household are using the same tablet. But you can also set up and use a guest mode that provides a completely new environment from your own and allows others to use the tablet without having any access to any of your personal data or your apps. Now, if you just want to hand over your tablet to someone for a quick second, there's a screen painting option that locks a certain app to the screen. This way, they can only use the one app that you allowed them to, and you can get out of it easily just by holding down the back and overview buttons and unlocking the phone from there. It's a pretty useful feature. 
Overall, Android Lollipop not only improves on design, but also brings over new and actually useful features. Although I wish that there were more apps that took advantage of the screen size, it's still pretty good. It's a really awesome operating system, and the Nexus 9 is supposed to be a reference point for the performance capabilities of the new software, but unfortunately, it's not. And I'm not saying that the Nexus 9 has bad performance, because it doesn't. In most cases, it performs really well, and it should. It's packing one of NVIDIA's latest Tegra K1 processors in there. Also, I noticed that whenever the tablet was running any type of demanding program, the back of it got really hot. But there are some instances where the tablet just stutters randomly when I'm just browsing the web or navigating through menus and opening different apps. I'm not saying that the performance should be perfect, but again, this is a flagship device and it should perform as such. On the back, you have a five megapixel camera, which performs okay. I don't really expect much from tablet cameras anyways. Uh, and the same goes with the video recording. It's 1080p and it's there, but don't really expect much from it. There's also a photosphere, which I just had to mention because it works pretty well sometimes, but other times not so much. Now, the last thing that I'll talk about is battery life. It's also pretty decent. You'll probably get around five to six hours of screen on time, but don't expect anything crazy from this tablet. One feature that I really enjoy though is the approximate battery usage. It can approximate how many hours you have left and it even shows you the time of day that it'll die around. It's not a huge deal, but it's really nice to have this when you're trying to maybe plan out your day. There's also a battery saving mode that'll allow you to get a few extra hours on the device. And what's really nice about it is it gives you this nice red bar to actually let you know that it's on. Now it does reduce performance, but again, it's kind of worth it if you're in a pinch and you really need the extra battery life. So this is the Nexus 9. It's a decent tablet with great software, but is it really worth the money? If you want a clean Android lollipop experience on a tablet, this is basically your only option. Like I said before, it's not a bad tablet, but it's just not that impressive to me. It's coming in at a flagship price at $400 for 16 gigabyte, and I'll keep the pricing and availability in the description, but I'd say that it's really up to you if Android 5.0 is really worth it. So guys, that is my review of the Nexus 9. I tried to make it as objective as possible and I hope you guys can appreciate that. But I'll be doing a full comparison between this and the iPad Air 2 shortly. So be sure to hit that subscribe button down below so that you can be notified when I'm done with all that. Um, if you guys enjoyed the video, be sure to hit that thumbs up button and leave a comment down below letting me know what you guys think of the Nexus 9. As always, thank you guys so much for watching and I'll catch you guys in the next video.